Hey guys, welcome back to the Bay Podcast. It's your host, Miss West Grader Coach, and I have a special friend here for our wrap up of the Dear Fear series. My friend, JK, please introduce yourself for the people and we'll rock and roll. Absolutely. Well, uh, you're hearing from JK, uh, CEO of JK International. And uh, what I am is I'm a personal development coach. And what we do is we help people increase in their personal development, their financial literacy, and also their spiritual development. Let's not forget about that piece. And so we help people all around the world. And uh, we put on seminars uh, every 60 to 90 days to increase you. Oh, I love that. So thank you again for being on. I know it was hard to track you down. You are a busy man out here in these streets. <laughs> but the funny thing is we get to wrap up the series with you. So uh, as you know, this series is called Dear Fear. And my question to you, when you kind of seen this trending on social and you see me writing to fear and doing this series, like what came up for you when you kind of see me throwing that out there like that? Well, well, first of all, let's let's give kudos to we need to give kudos to you are an incredible entrepreneur. I love the Dear Fear series. I try to share it as much as possible. Uh, I think that when you're writing, when I see you writing Dear Fear, right, you, it's like you're having a conversation with fear and let, letting, uh, letting them know, listen, listen, you don't conquer me. You don't own me. I own you. Not only do I own you, I control you and I use you when I need to use you to further my actions. And so when I see you with the, the, the videos and you're writing, I, just, I love it. It gets me fired up. It gets me excited. And uh, some people run the fear. You seem like you run towards it and utilize it and harness it. So that's kind of some of the things I see when when, when I see those videos from you. Awesome. I like how you mentioned we kind of get to pick and choose when we use fear. And a lot of time we let fear dictate and control us like we're, we're puppets, right? But we literally can reposition ourselves to where we use it to our advantage instead of letting it push us down where we can't move. Absolutely. And I think that's all about mindset. Oh, for sure. Right? For sure. Um, so when it comes to mindset, because I know you do a lot, but specifically, because I've been to one of your live seminars and I love, number one, I love all your different um, avenues, whether it's the visual, whether you have the, uh, the you know, your, your board up and you, you're doing what you do. But when it comes to personal and professional development and mindset, Share with me how you even got into the arena. Well, in personal development, I was in an industry called network marketing about seven, eight years ago. And in network marketing, one of the biggest industry that operates inside that industry is personal development. You know, when you're building a long organization or a big or international organization, you need people to dig down deep into certain books, right, philosophies in order to keep going when you have a goal or a huge goal, right? You have to have a certain philosophy, what we call uh, in the bubble group, right? A certain philosophy, a certain activity, certain way of thinking. And so because I was introduced to that, uh, that industry, which I had no clue about years ago, I fell in love with business, but I fell in love with the, the personal development part of it. Yeah. And then about uh, four years ago, God literally spoke through someone and told me, said, listen, God told you to do something years ago and you haven't done it yet. And I said, oh, I said, okay, well, well, what is that? And they said, well, you know what it is. And if you don't remember, you need to go consult with God again. And I said, okay, no problem. You're coming at me a little hard, but all right, let me, let me go, let me go check in with God. Right. right let me go check in with God. And um, I did. I didn't hear any answer. And then my father invited me out to, to church uh, one evening. And it was like a revival. Was amazing. Uh, the preacher was amazing. She was awesome. Now, after my father was supposed to uh, introduce me to the preacher, before I can even sh shake her hand, she said, oh, I know who you are. I said, it's okay. I said, well, did my father give you? She said, no, no, no. She said, no, you're a minister, right? I said, I said, no. She said, yeah. She said, your ministry is too big for a building. That was her specific words. She wow. said, your ministry is too, build, too big for a building. She said, you're going to go all around the world. You need to go home and consult with God. Second time I, I heard that in about two, three weeks. I said, okay, God. So I went back into my notes and went back and I found, I found this blueprint of JK International and this idea that God gave me years ago when I first got wow. into the, uh, network marketing, uh, 2000, 2013, 2014. But because I was building that business at the time, I put God's business to the side yeah. and God said, it's time now. And so here we are for three, four years later, 
J Kids National, and uh, we're we're doing our best to to get to everybody possible who needs us. Wow! So you basically had to put I'm not gonna say the ego, but you had to put your thoughts to the side and just say yes to what God said. Oh, 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 absolutely. You know how you know how in weddings they say you got to say yes to the dress. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I had to first of all, I had to I had to remove my will and get into God's will. Right. The Bible talks about uh, sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you're obedient and you sacrifice? Right. What happens when you do both? Just like quantity, quality is better than quantity. But right. what happens when you have quality and you got quantity? And so. Once I got into God's will, I got back into my own will, what I really truly desired anyway. And now both of our wills are just moving. And that's where everything is, is prospering pretty much. I love that. And the, the magical part of, of entrepreneurship and what we do is that we actually love what we do. And we get to be oh. compensated for having fun, for sharing our gifts, for making an impact, for being creative, for thinking outside the box, for saying F fear, all of the things, and you actually get to make a living from what you love to do. And I think some people don't even believe that it's possible, but it is possible. <laughs> it definitely is possible. Right? We're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So share with me when when you think of fear, because I know we all have struggled with something, right? Right now we can boss up, oh, you tell fear what to do, but I'm sure that there maybe was a time where that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. And I would love to know a quick story or, or example on how fear showed up and maybe you struggle with it, but then what did you do to really push past it? Uh, 2009, mm -hmm. I was uh, launching a new business in a certain industry and uh, colleagues of mine started to, I was changing. My, my mindset was changing. My my philosophies were changing and my, my colleagues and peers and friends around me started to get uncomfortable, which started to make me uncomfortable. And what it did, it started from, it started making me second guess, should I continue doing what I'm doing? Yeah. My friends are not comfortable. Now, I wasn't thinking like that uh, consciously fully, but subconsciously I was definitely feeling that way. And so I, I used to get, I used to get very fearful in the days to even do my business. Like, man, the yeah. more I do my business, the more my friends are going to disappear. The more my the more my family starts to act funny. They they, they started to oh you're acting weird, yep. right? You're acting different. You're acting brand new. But then I have to come to understand, and I became fearful of that. But I have to come to understand is you're supposed to act brand new. I'm not supposed to stay the same, wow. right? So our our bodies change when we get older. Our faces change when we get older. Mm -hmm. Everything changes, but my personality shouldn't change. My bank account shouldn't change. What, what I'm thinking shouldn't change. I upgrade my iPhone, but I don't up, up, upgrade me. That's stupid. That's foolish, right? It's foolish. So I, I became very fearful to become successful. That was that's what that was the deep version of that. I, I was becoming the more money I made, the more scared I was. I was to even tell my parents that hey, I'm making more money that in in a month or a quarter than you make in a year. Wow. And coming and coming from Caribbean background. Sometimes that don't fly right, right? That don't, it don't settle in sometimes. And so right. I became very fearful at Thanksgiving, uh, you know, to talk, to speak. And I'm a speaker. I love talking. I love communicating. But I'll be, I'll, I would be the quiet person at Christmas, even though Christmas is my favorite holiday, right? Because I would be fearful. Don't, don't ask me how my day is, right? I'm going to tell you the truth. Right. You say, well, how, how, how was your day? Well, I did this. I had this meeting. Not that's, that's the part. I made this amount of money. I'm going to. Don't, you can't get mad at me that my day was amazing. Maybe yeah. you need to check why your day isn't, right? And so I became more uncomfortable and more fearful to even do the business or even talk about the business. But, however, I conquered fear. I got that out the way, right? I made sure that I came first. Self-love is the best love. Right. I came first, put myself first, right? Put my, put my mask on first. And then I started to go back and, and rescue other family members and things like that. And now it's all, it's all love now. Mm. Wow. So, wow. Let, let's unpack that. Because so, it seemed like you put their feelings ahead of your own and that's why you were shrinking. You were unable to just be JK and share because you were worried about them feeling inadequate, them feeling like, oh, 
And, and I think that's the thing, because when you think of imposter syndrome or even fear, it's their inner critic and it's the feeling. We have mm. no supporting data. We have no evidence, but there's something in us that's making up this narrative that's not even true, right? And so true. I love that you use example, even family. Most people think, oh, family. No, sometimes family. It's especially family. Especially family. Yeah. I, I can relate. That's a whole nother podcast. Um, so once you got out of your own way, and I always mm-hmm. use that in the work that I do, because literally we're in our own way. How did everything just kind of unlock for you? I started attracting, once I got out of that fear and I, I really got out of my own, my own head, my own way, I started attracting other like-minded people. I started moving away from certain individuals, certain things, even family. I, I, I used to I used to say this and my family used to laugh at it. They, they laugh more now. Mm-hmm. But I said, listen, I'm gonna see you in season. I said, what do you what, what does that mean? Oh, if I saw you in winter, I'm not gonna see you again until spring. Woo. That's what I used to do. I used to, if I saw someone that I know I shouldn't be around, even if, even if it's family, my own mother had to do it too. I love her to death. But she, but she's more of a worker, not an entrepreneur. She doesn't understand that, right? Fully. And, and I can respect the security and I understand that. No, no, you know, kudos to people who work nine to five. Right. But for me, just having a job by itself is, is incorrect. And so um, getting, being attractive, right? Because once you become what you're supposed to become, you start attracting other people who are already doing what they've been doing. Mm-hmm. And so now you become around, you, you get in, the, in this circle of, of superhuman beings that are operating at a very, very high level. And so... I, I, I became attractive to, to them. They became attractive to me. And then from there, I just started to have a new atmosphere and a new environment, which changed how I lived, how I thought, how I walked, I talked, smiled. Everything changed. I just got to take a breath because that <laughs> is so paramount and environment is key. And sometimes we think if somebody's family, mom, dad, cousin, brother, ch- child, that we are supposed to, to do something different. And honestly, no, we always come first. And I love that you shared that you started engaging with a different kind of mindset. I'm not gonna say a higher level, but it's a different kind of mindset. If I'm around people who feel that 100K a year is above and beyond, then I'm gonna be thinking that that's what I shoot for. But if I'm around people who make that in a day, in a week, in a month, in a quarter, or even in six months, then I see it's realistic and I can open up my mind and my mindset to even know that there's more. It's bigger than that. And I think that, you know, just that one shift in our mindset can literally change our whole day. Absolutely. Knowing that there is more. So we're going to shift the conversation a little bit. I always ask this question. What would you (laughs) tell your, don't get nervous. It's it's safe. (laughs) You're safe. What would you tell your 16-year-old self? You think of 16-year-old JK, like what was he doing? Where was he at? And what would be the feedback that you give him if you could talk to him right now? Well, 16-year-old JK, I'll tell you, will be very transparent with you. He was in the street doing things he wasn't supposed to do around people he wasn't supposed to be around. Get himself into trouble he shouldn't be in. If I, if I was able to hop in a time machine, and go right back in time and meet him on a corner of a street or in a car or something like that. The first thing I probably would tell him is, listen, you made it. Mm. If you have any doubt of what you're going to do in life, if you're going to be successful, bro, I'm here to tell you, hello, we made it. We made it. That's the first thing I would tell him. We made it. So don't have any fear. Don't have any doubt. Don't have any, any uh, miscomplacent. No, no, bro, we made it. Hi, I'm the future you. And we look good. We look good doing it, right? Brush it off. Like, whatever's <laughs> going to happen over the next few years, I promise you, you're going to get out of it. And you will be successful. And you will be in a happy, spirited person. So that'd be the first thing i tell them. The second thing i will probably uh, tell them is be mindful of your friends. That's one thing I wasn't. Be mindful of your friends. Not everyone is your friend. Not, not everyone is your peer or your colleague. Just right. because you play video games with them or you go to the club with them or you drink with them, doesn't make you your peer or your friend. See, sometimes we, we have friends for a long period of time and we think they're really their friends until we remove devices, right? 
And mm -hmm. he said, okay, can, can I have a conversation with you? And I tell people this, try this with your friends. And some people don't want to do because they know what's going to happen. Try this with your friends. Remove the drinking, remove the club, remove whatever activity that you do, video games, if you're, you know, if you're a guy, remove these things. You speak in there. And, and just sit with your friends for half an hour, see what happens. If y'all can't, if y'all gonna be on your phone for, for the whole half an hour, you got nothing in common. You need to do, you need to disconnect that friendship. There's no growth, there's nothing. Or you just need to play video games with that person when you play video games and, and remove yourself from that atmosphere when you need to and go back to your regular life as well. Right. You gotta know how to, when to see people, not all day and not, and not bring a, a broke-minded person to a wealth uh, uh, seminar, it's not, it's a disconnect. Season. And so, Season. yeah. Absolutely. So those are the two things I would probably tell him for sure. I love it. Thanks for sharing that. So for me, 16 year old Lashana, I would tell her to enjoy being a teenager. <laughs> Stop trying to be grown. Mm. And what I mean by that is I was working. I lied on my application when I was 14, just so I could get a job. You know, and sometimes we rush things. Now, mind you, and I, I share this on every single episode, your typical 14-year-old is not going to be trying to get a job unless <laughs> there's lack. True. Unless something is not being provided. Unless there is a gap, a void, right? And so my parents were both, um, they're both clean, but they, they were struggling with drug addiction. Um, mm. You know, grew up in a chaotic household. So... I had to go out there and fend for myself. And what I realized is that that actually has helped me in the current, like resiliency, being mm. able to adapt, being able mm. to think outside the box and make it work no matter what. Right. And sometimes when we're, when we have a silver spoon or when we're sheltered, we get punched in the face by real life. And we, we have a different kind of, 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 unfunctioning dysfunctional i don't think unfunctioning is a word but anyways we have, a <laughs> we have a different kind of challenge so i'm actually grateful like if i had to do it all over again i literally would do it all over again the same exact way because it it paved a path for me and i made sure that my daughter wouldn't have to go through that right so the learning is in in the journey but we just got to pick it up and identify where it is and leverage it instead of dragging it. That's a bar, right? I, that was, that was poetry. That was, <laughs> that was poetry. Mm, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's what I would tell my 16 year old self because at the end of the day, yeah, I still would have been grinding, but did I really have to be lying on applications just, just mm. to make money? There's, there's other ways, right? Um, so I, I love this little quick activity and, uh, like literally, I don't know if you can see my face when you were talking, it's like, I was in a coaching session. I'm just like, <laughs> this, this is the, the, the baby seminar to what you got coming up. So before we wrap up, tell us like what's on the horizon. And also what are you in the pocket in to where, when I think of this one thing, I need to immediately think of JK international. So the, the question is twofold. What's on the horizon? How can people get plugged in? And then if somebody's watching it, like, oh my God, he's the one, but they really don't know exactly. They, they want to know exactly what you do in regards to how to help them. Like, what are you in the pocket on? Okay. So let me answer the second question first. Okay. And the first question last. So when you think of JK, I want, I want people to always think of personal development. Okay. Now, do I do other things? Absolutely. But when you see me, when you see Pepsi, you think of, soda right and so when you see jk you want to say oh personal development he's a person i can go to if i want to increase who i am as a person how i think how i behave uh my activities uh uh my principles my morals mm -hmm. okay uh, my vibration uh, all these things that's within me me i concentrate on the person okay now i do do group coaching and 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 uh, even company coaching however I love to focus on a one-on-one -on -one person, mm -hmm. right? Where, 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 where is it that you need help in? Or where is it that you think you need help in? And then when we talk, we find out where you really need help in. Right. Because I like to get to the root of things and then the seed and then the soil. So people just like to get to the root. But the root comes from a seed and the seed, you got to check where you put 
the seed in the soil. So you got to go all the way to back in the day, generational curses and everything. So I like to, I, I like to personal, be very personal with someone. But if you think of JK, you think of personal development. How can I grow in all the areas of my life? And that's what I come and help you to do. So that's that part. All right. And so what we got, and just a segue from that, what we got coming up is the first, and I'm, I am, I am so excited. Like I, I, it's like Christmas for me. Okay. Like doing, doing, doing a seminar is, is a, is a special part of my heart because we have a, we get a chance to put a group of people in one place, whether digital or physical, and we get to literally just drown them and engulf them in personal development, financial literacy, and spiritual literacy. So this one we got coming up is the first installment of the Build It series. Now, we have 12 seminars coming up over the next three years. We just finished doing the last 12, right? Mm -hmm. That was amazing over from uh, 2017 till now. And so that was amazing. But we got a brand new series called the Build It series. And we're going to teach you in this one coming up how to build your gift. You may not understand. Well, JK, I got to build my gift. Too. Yeah, you got to build your gift. You got to work on it. All right. You got to work on it. Build your gift, your credit, and your bank account. Mm. And we have a special guest, Terry Kauser, life coach, credit expert, entrepreneur, investor, serial entrepreneur. Let me tell you something. Terry is, is just lightning. She just every she just she just <laughs> a, a bundle of just excitement and she gets the work done. And yeah. one thing I love about Terry, she knows her stuff. Yeah. And so we are privileged to have her. Uh, it is July 24th from 12 to 3 p.m. virtually on streaming on our own private platform. Amazing. And I'll make sure to have that information in the notes. Um, and you'll also have in the notes how to connect with JK. So JK, before we wrap up, give me one word that describes your experience on the Bay podcast. Love. Okay. Can I add another word? Do you mind if I add one more word? You can get to it's cool. <laughs> joy. Just love and joy. That's that's I I, I enjoyed this this uh this conversation and uh you are delightful as always. Thank you. I appreciate it. So my two words, I'm going to do two since you did two. Um, <laughs> every time I talk to you, it's very, I'm not going to say motivational because it's a, a tear up. It's one thing to be motivated, right? But you, when you talk, you just, your gifting is just that, that fire, that lightning, that letting you know that you can actually do it from a deeper soul. So I don't know what word that is. You got a word for that? I don't got to work for that. <laughs> Whatever it is, I appreciate it. What's that inspiration? And then the other one is going to be authenticity. I feel that mm. you are very real, very relatable, no matter what. And I love um, on your IG, you, you got your, your your cup and you be sipping and, and just, <laughs> just everything. I just love it. So make sure you guys check him out. Um, if it's your first time tuning in, make sure you subscribe to the Bay Podcast and to Miss West Creative Coach. And then lastly, I just want to let everybody know if you are wanting to build a core offer of impact and you're confused, you need clarity, you're scared, I'm your girl, hit me up. Um, my DM is always open and you can reach me at misswestcreativecoach.com. And we will wrap up the Dear Fear series with our amazing guest, JK. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Bye guys. Peace.